Today, I would like to teach you how to find the x and y intercepts of the following rational function of x being divided by x squared minus x. Now, the first thing is whenever you want to find the x and y intercepts, you always want to make sure that you have a fully factored function. Okay, everything has to be factored, the numerator and the denominator. So what I realize is that I can factor the denominator, right? There is a common x term and I can pull one of those x's out and then what's going to be left is x minus then, this is just going to be a 1. Right, if you were to think about distributing this x to each of those two terms, you would have gotten then x squared minus x, which would have been the original uh, function there. Now what you're going to do from here is that you're going to cancel any terms that are possible between the numerator and the denominator. So what I can do is I can cancel basically this x on the top and that x on the bottom. So the function I'm left with now is going to be simply 1 divided by x minus 1. Now this is the function you want to evaluate now for the x and the y intercepts, not the original. You're going to get kind of weird, wacky answers if you do the original. So always make sure you have a fully factored function. So now if I want to find the x-intercept, all we're going to do is follow a simple series of steps. You're going to basically set the function equal to 0 and then solve for x. That's it. Solve for x. So take this thing. Instead of writing f of x, just write 0 equals now 1 divided by x minus 1. And what, you're going to, what we're going to realize is that we're going to have 0 times x minus 1 equaling 1. And we're going to have kind of a strange answer here, right? Because we're going to get 0 equal 1. What this basically tells us is that, hey, wait a minute, there is no value of x that's going to make this thing true. Okay, there is no value of x. So what this means is that there is no x-intercept. There is none. In other words, if you ever have what's considered now a bottom-heavy function, this is considered a bottom-heavy function, where the power of x in the denominator is bigger than the power of x in the numerator. You have no x in the numerator, so therefore the x's power is technically 0, right? Anything to the 0 power is just 1. And in the denominator, it has a 1, uh, it's to the first power. So the power of x in the denominator is bigger, therefore this is considered a bottom-heavy function. And anytime you have a bottom-heavy function, there's always a horizontal asymptote as y is e at y equals 0. In other words, there is no x-intercept. It doesn't cross the x-axis. Okay? Now, you're going to follow, so that's, that's the answer. There is no x-intercept. Then, to, to solve for the y-intercept now, to solve for the y-intercept, you're going to do the same process but opposite. Instead of setting f of x equaling 0, you're going to set all of your x values equal to 0. And then what you're going to do is you're going to solve for now f of x. Okay, solve for your f of x. So here's your function. Write f of x equals now 1 over anywhere you see x plug in a 0, minus 1. And f of x here is going to be equal to 1 over negative 1, which is basically saying that the y value, which is the f of x, is equaling negative 1. This is now the y-intercept. It's going to intercept the y-axis at negative 1. Okay? So the x-intercept, there is none. And the y-intercept now, you're going to have the coordinates. Remember, all y-intercepts always have the coordinate of 0 for x. That's why I plugged in 0 here in the function, comma, negative 1. Okay? Now what we can do is we can graph this thing and see what happens. So now, just to check this out in the calculator, go into your calculator, go to y equals, plug in the function, and then hit graph. What you're going to see now is you're going to see that there is a vertical asymptote. Okay, not that it really matters, but it's at a positive 1. Okay, and the there is no location. There's a horizontal asymptote here at y is equal to 0, meaning that this function will never cross that x-axis. It never does. Okay, but we do see that there is a uh, y-intercept here at negative 1. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helps. And check out our channel because we have thousands and thousands of videos, not only in mathematics, but chemistry and physics as well. We always have a lot of stuff coming out, and we're going to leave you a lot of goodies over time in the description below. So please always uh, check that out. We really, truly want to help you through your class. And the best way to do that is to do a ton of practice and focus on problems. And that's what we're all set up for. We have thousands of solved solutions out there. Take care.